Brand new and just landed in my lap for a review. This is another one of those guns that has been asked for by a lot of you guys out there. It is the Umarex Glock 17. Much anticipated. Will it have been worth the wait? Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. Today I have in my hot, sweaty little mitts the brand new Glock 17 from Umarex. Now most of you know I've been a big fan of Umarex. They seem to hit the right spot most of the time. Have they done it again with this Glock 17 replica? Well, let's take a look at it first of all. Well, at first sight it definitely looks like the real thing. The unmistakable square shape, the size and those markings make it look just like the firearms Glock 17. The safety on the trigger also adds to the realism, but let's look even closer. This is a blowback CO2 pistol which already gives it a higher rating than the 19 which was probably more show and less action. The slider on the top is metal with the rest all plastic. The main body, pistol grip, trigger guard and trigger are all plastic. Now I know it's difficult sometimes to just say it is plastic and maybe I should use the term ballistic polymer or some such technically descriptive wording. I sometimes pick up a gun and feel it has been made out of real quality plastics that truly deserve a more technically descriptive noun and sometimes not. This does not fall into the highest quality category that I've handled but it does the job. The grip is sure-footed and comfortable and left or right-handed. The magazine release itself doesn't get in the way either, yet it's quick to hand when needed. When you pull back on the top slider, the lack of rigidity at the front of the pistol is evident. Is that a deal breaker? No, I don't think so. But I'm here to observe and report at the end of the day. Other than the mag release, there is a lock open release button, which is the only other metal item here. It is simple and effective, if a little noisy. There is also a rail on the front to add toys and a nicely recessed barrel for effect. The sights are open and fixed, front and rear, and they form part of the original slider pressing. They come with white markings for ease of sighting. The one thing I'm pleased to see on this, where the Glock 19 tester didn't have, is a separate safety. This is under the front of the gun and is easily red with red and white dots. The action is a definite click and is beautifully recessed into the gun, which sadly makes it fiddly to operate. It's solid and firm. I like fiddly. Leaves a tendency to not bother using it maybe. It does require fingers with nails on to be able to operate it. If you have what my kids used to call sausage fingers and you bite your nails, you will probably need to forget using it. The magazine is a simple dropout item and has a traditional screw-in CO2 type fitting, which uses the supplied hex key. It also has a slide down on the front to load the 18 rounds of BBs. This slide does have a lockdown on the spring which saves the fingers and nails, but sadly there's no entry point directly into the magazine tray, so they have to be dropped in through the top. It's a simple and effective method that has been used on a whole plethora of CO2 pistols and it works. Slide the magazine back into pistol when you've completed and you're ready to go. 
The trigger has a pull weight of about five and a half pounds and doesn't feel too bad at all. It has that preferred lock open after last shot to add to the overall experience and a pretty good blowback feel to it as well. There is a claimed three joules maximum of power, so it was off to the chrono to check that out. First up, steel, 5.37 grain BBs. Well, I saw an average of 356 feet per second, giving 1.51 foot-pounds or 2.05 joules. It does state clearly on the box, steel BBs. In which case then, it must be time to try some alternative fuels. And as usual, this is the interesting part. I tried the 7.4 grain copper, and they worked fine, with a slower average velocity of 320 feet per second, giving 1.68 foot-pounds or 2.28 joules. So, as you would expect, slower, but closer to the maximum 3 joules claimed. Lead BBs. Well, they just jammed up, so a non-starter really. Lastly, the Dust Devils. A lightweight 4.35 grains saw a respectable average velocity of 378 feet per second, giving 1.38 foot pounds or 1.87 joules. Two things were learnt here. One, it does fire quite a range of fuels or ammo. And two, it has a loud action and a real feel to that blowback. Target time then. Well, as I've already said, this has fixed sights. So what we get here is what we have. Unless we want to fit a laser, of course. Fingers crossed, here goes. Okay, not too bad, could be better. But I think practice would improve that. Conclusion. A Glock is a hugely fashionable and desirable thing at the moment. Now the problem there is people will have their own opinions and trying to get everyone to agree on everything is like a 28 states in the European Union agreeing on a Brexit deal or all 52 states in America agreeing on the Paris Agreement. You just know it's not going to happen and they all have their own feelings and opinions. But, for what it's worth, I love the styling of this gun. It's not overly priced at around £130 UK retail. It isn't overly engineered or radical in an, any magazine or loading design. It has been qu kept quite simple, so it works, and represents the original design looks as closely as possible. The blowback action has a great feel to it, as I've already said, and it's wonderfully loud too. If a Glock is on your must-have to add to your collection, you're not going to be disappointed. And above all, you won't have to sell one of your kidneys to be able to afford one.